Hi, I'm Margie Deeb, author of the award-winning book, The Beater's Color Palette and The Beater's Guide to Color, and many other bead and color related books and articles. For a color palette to be harmonious and beautiful, it must be as carefully balanced as a mobile. Whether you're working with a two color palette or a palette with 12 or more colors, the amount of each color in relationship to the other colors is absolutely critical. It's not just enough to find colors that look great together. You need to determine how much of each color in relation to the other colors will create the effect you want with your color scheme. In this broadcast, Color Balance and Proportion, I'll show you one powerful approach to balancing the proportions of your colors within a scheme. If you work with what I'm going to show you, it will improve every color scheme you create from here on out. Come on, let's get started. You've got two colors you're going to work with, a two color palette. You've already chosen this luscious kind of daffodil yellow and a wonderful rich lavender. Now we're using complementary colors here because I want something with high contrast and I want you to see how changing the proportions makes a radical difference, especially with high contrast colors. So we've got these two complementary colors. I'll tell you right now, here's a great secret to know. 50-50 rarely works as an exciting or dynamic kind of color scheme. It creates a stasis that's just so balanced that it becomes boring. So experiment and play around with that. In fact, let me just show you. It's this easy. What if we have, say, three quarters yellow and one quarter of the purple? Isn't that more exciting? Now, you may not like it better, but it certainly is more dynamic. And if you're not a yellow lover, you won't love this at all, but maybe you would love something that's more like this. Three quarters of the purple, purple lavender, and a quarter of the yellow. To me, that makes a very nice harmony. Because what we've done here is we've made a dominant We've made a dominant color out of this lavender. We have a dominant and then a subdominant color. What if we tried adding a little more lavender or purple in the, sh in the uh, form of a different shade of lavender? So you have a whole lot more. You have like 90% of the purple now, but it's in two different versions of the purple or the lavender. We still have this here, the lavender is our dominant color. It's in two shades now. And we have what becomes, instead of secondary, becomes now an accent of yellow. So you've used the family of purple as a dominant color with an accent of yellow. I could even push it this far to give us just about 5% yellow. That, to me, is stunning. Now, you have to use your imagination and imagine this in context, not just as flat color. All right, let's apply what we've just spoken of about dominance and accents or dominance and secondary colors to another color scheme. I've got three beautiful analogous colors here. Analogous means the colors are similar to one another. They're next to each other on the wheel. They're friendly neighbors on the color wheel. With analogous colors, because they're similar, they harmonize easily, and proportions are still very critical, but not as critical as they are when you're dealing with complementary colors, which are high contrast. So what we have here is a yellow green. We've got more of an emerald green here and a blue. Well, how do we start to balance this? We've got to ask ourselves what we want. What is the effect that you want? If you want something cool and refreshing and calming, you're going to want to lead more with your blue. Blue might be your dominant color in this case. So what you do is you just start experimenting. I wanted blue as a dominant, so I start with it. But do I want that much blue, or do I want that much blue? Do I want to make my yellow green just an accent here? Or do I want to make the green, the emerald green, our dominant color? Maybe I want something really a lot hotter and citrusy and tangier, and I want to make this our dominant color. So maybe we do something like that. Look how much it changes everything just to change the proportions. It's astounding. And it's so important to realize the radical change you can make in a palette just by focusing on proportions. And I want you to focus on 
always what is going to be my dominant color, what's going to be an accent, in this case it's here, and what's the subdominant. Now, you don't always have to focus on those three things, but the one thing you always must focus on is a dominant color. Either a dominant color or a dominant color family, like we did with the purple and yellow. Let's make another color scheme focusing on dominants and secondaries or accents using these four colors. Again, to choose a dominant, you have to ask yourself, what's the final effect I want? What is the impact I want to have with my colors? In this case, I want something sophisticated, warm, and earthy. I love this rich, foresty green. So I have just chosen, just because I want it, that's going to be my dominant color. So then let's work with balancing these other colors. We've got a really beautiful couple of, of uh, oranges here, but they're deep, rich brown oranges. And I would like to feature them pretty strongly because they make an incredible contrast with this green, don't they? They're beautiful. So this very, very neutral color is going to be my accent, simply by choice. Now, right now, what's the dominant? That's the dominant because there's the most showing of that color. That is not what I want. I really want more of this as the dominant. How much more? I don't know. Let's start with 50% and then start adding. I know I want a lot of this orange to show, this burnt kind of russet orange, and a little of the light orange to show, and then just a little of the neutral. I would start here and then I'd keep tweaking it. And that would take a little more time than what we have here, but that's how I approach it. Uh, I can tell you right now, I'm feeling the need for a lot more of this green than what I just showed you, and a lot less of that light orange, so it might be something like that with just a speck. I really enjoy a very asymmetrical approach where we have a strong, a very obvious and strong dominant. To me, that makes a really strong, powerful color scheme. I hope you'll consciously balance the proportions of the next color scheme you design. There's so much to explore about proportions. I've devoted a whole class to it, in person and online. Creative proportions can turn a good palette into one that is stunning, and learning to master this subtle art can set your work apart from everyone else's. Thanks for joining me in this color exploration. Oh, by the way, speaking on behalf of color, it wants you to know that it has unending gifts and surprises for you. So dive in and have fun.